I have Lana Turner of The Perfect Ten. The Perfect Ten is a new podcast, which is available on iTunes. And um, it's, it's very interesting. It's, um, I guess you would call it a bit of a hodgepodge of many different subjects, everything having to do with sex, religion, um, current events, all, all types of things that are going on in the world right now. But the reason that I was interested to interview Lana today is because she has a segment of the show that's called Cooking with Porn Stars. Now, um, tell, tell our listeners today, how did you come up with that segment of your show? What, what kind of prompted you to decide to bring porn stars on your show and have them cook with you and discuss whatever's on their mind? Well, we were really good at interviewing interesting people in a new light. Because I feel like at this point, you can pretty much find information on anybody online, even your next door neighbor, if you, look, you, know, if you want to look them up. Oh, yeah. So when we were thinking about, I, I'm always interested and fascinated by porn, but to just go ahead and interview somebody straight ahead, I, I felt like we just did the same things everyone else has done. So I'm thinking about it, and, you know, everybody can cook, and everybody can fuck, but very few people get to do it professionally. So <laughs> we thought, why not give porn stars an opportunity to cook something? And it might come back you know, some sort of memory or something interesting that, you know, we haven't heard about them. And it's, it's working. So far, so good, you know? Now, who have you had on your show so far? Now, I noticed that you have ta- you've you had Tabitha Stevens on, and she's pretty, uh, well, she's very well known. How was your interview with her? Tabitha was good. We actually haven't aired that yet. It's going to come up in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, she's awesome. We had so much fun talking with her. She's so funny and just adorable. And uh, we're really excited to have her on the show, and we can't wait to hear the interview. I think the response is going to be awesome. And then we had a lesser-known porn star named Jocelyn Stone, but she was great because, I mean, she is in a completely different world of porn from where Tabitha is, and uh, and that was really cool. Next week, we're actually going to have some of Ron Jeremy because we're, we're actually going to do a cooking segment with him um, when we get an opportunity. We've, talk, we've worked it out with him, but we went to the gathering of the Juggalos, and Ron was there, and we hung out with him for a good chunk of the time when we were there. He was a blast. That's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. And I think it's excellent because right now, um, as we discussed yesterday before this interview, the porn industry is in such a transition right now. It's, it's in my opinion, going to have to go through a lot of reform. And a lot of um, adult stars, you know, in, you know, regardless of what segment of adult they're in, uh, many of them are looking for a way to showcase their other talents. Now, have you found... Um, that some of the people that you've interviewed so far have had some um, rather unusual talents or interest. Um, has anyone really surprised you as far as um, their alternative interests opposed to their um, sexy persona? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think what's so fun about what we're doing is we're getting to know the person, not just the sex symbol. And, um, and Tabitha has a number of different businesses that she's involved in. And, you know, just constantly moving her career forward. You know, I mean, because well, both of the women that we recorded to were kind of, like, older in the industry. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think you definitely need to reevaluate where, where you are and what you want to accomplish. And, you know, because the industry changes as well as you change within the industry, probably. So um, that's kind of interesting, too. But, um, but, you know, I think everybody has multi-levels. And it's really hard when you see, pardon the pun, when you see somebody on film getting, you know, nailed or somebody doing the nailing, for them to, for you mentally to remove yourself from that and say, oh, you know, you you have family, you have life, you have other things going on, and that's the stuff that interests me. Like, what is, you know, what's going on in your world outside of what you've done professionally too? So, there's, it's, it's I think like even hanging out with Ron at the at the Juggalos, mm-hmm. everybody's yelling at him. And, hey, show me your dick, and all this kind of stuff, and you lose, I mean, people just forget, like, that's a person, <laughs> just because, you know, his dick is on film, like, let's talk to you about something else right now, so, and then, of course, let's see that dick, too, because it's huge, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, for people out there who would like to find you online, um, you're on Facebook, and your Facebook address is facebook.com, Lana Turner, and that's spelled L-A-H-N-A. Turner, T-U-R-N-E-R. Also, you're on. Oops, also, you're on Twitter, and your Twitter address is Lana or at Lana Turner. 
Um, uh -huh. People can also find you on YouTube, Lana Turner Videos. On oh, YouTube. yeah, you know what's so funny is that when we launched our uh, podcast, we actually, Ralphie and I shot a mocking porn, which is like a fake porn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's really funny. I mean, like, it took a lot of courage for us to even do this in the first place. But basically, it's um, married fake porn for people with kids. <laughs> I think it's a great concept. I really do. Um, now, I wanted to ask you, now I love your website. The design of your website is really, um, it's, it's so professional, but it's also really cute. But I do have to ask, um, what prompted you to make the choice to be naked on the front page? Very bold. Very it was bold. Very bold. Yes. That was, that was a tough decision to make. Um, it was actually but it's classy. on the cover of my CD. So um, I'm wearing pigtails and a microphone placed in front of my crotch. And it just says, the title of the CD is If These Lips Could Talk. I think and it's brilliant, really. I, I really do. I think, it's, I think it's shot very classy. And um, I haven't seen, I, I haven't, um, you, you know, I, I love going to comedy shows. I love comedians. And um, I think that there is a quite a bit of kinship. You know, we were speaking about that yesterday, too, um, in regards to, porn stars and comedians, I, I think it's really because you're willing to bare your soul, you know, um, it takes a lot of guts to, you, you know, be able to say to yourself, okay, I really believe that what I have to say can make an audience laugh. Um, yeah, yeah, um, I actually anticipate seeing quite a few porn stars going into the comedic circuit, and I think that the venue that you're providing could be a forerunner in leading the way. Um, are you planning at yeah. any point on making like an ongoing webcast even um, with your concept for, um, uh, um, what, what do you call it, porn for married people? Because I think, it, or, or you're, you know, I, no, I think it's excellent because um, a, a, lot of, a lot of married people are so afraid of, or anyone in a traditional um, relationship are, are you, you know, a lot of porn that's out there has gone so into left field with being so extreme that now I think it's starting to pull back. And I think inserting a little bit of a comedic flavor into something sexy, I think it's a great idea. Well, I just thought, as far as releasing the porn, I thought it was funny because, you know, you've seen these reality, reality stars who release the porn and it just sort of helps their career. So we were kind of tongue-in-cheek in ours. We thought, oh, that'd be funny to have our own sort of, oh, we do a porn with our... You know, release of our podcast, which we kind of view as a bit of a reality show because we're allowing people to kind of look inside our lives. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as the the picture goes, I I mean, I took a lot of courage. My husband actually encouraged me to do it because oh. I was a little nervous about the idea. But I figured I'd take the picture. If I don't like the picture, nobody will ever see it. But it, a lot of women and like men aren't, aren't overly like it's not overly sexualized because it is funny. And women are in general, it's funny. So I, I don't think people are, are, are super upset by it. Like, it, it generally gets a great response. I don't think it's upsetting or any, I don't think it could be seen as upsetting or anything. <laughs> Um, I think it's bold. I think it's bold. I think it's shot very well. I think it's, I, you know, I was surprised. But it mm -hmm. really, um, I think it looks great, and you look great in it. And I Thank think it sets so the much. tone for everything that you're doing. I'm very impressed with your work, your comedic style. Actually, how would you describe your comedic style? I play songs. I play guitar. Mm -hmm. I play, um, you know, more adult-oriented comedy songs on the guitar. All original. Um, so that's how I got started in comedy with playing music. But oh. I, I do agree with you that um, that porn stars and comedians have a lot in common. I, 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 there's something about one working the road and going to gigs that you know everyone's like kind of that similar lifestyle. And then I don't know what I mean beyond that. It's got to be something, some sort of need for attention, maybe. On some oh yes, oh know. yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, if, if you're not somebody who wants attention, I don't think that being a comedian or a porn star is right for you. I, I, no. I have to say that's a prerequisite <laughs> for a job. There's something wrong with, with all of us who have to stand on stage and do something that makes people even look at you and laugh at you. You're like, most people are scared of that. I just went up there with like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> now for any porn stars out there who might be interested in... Um, being on your show, what would be the best way for them to contact you? Oh, just hit us up online. It's so easy to find people now. 
or do, you do Twitter or Facebook or um, just go to the website and email. We also have a, we, we set up a website that also corresponds with our podcast. It's perfect. The E-R-F-E-C-T 10, like the number one, zero, P-O-D, abbreviated for podcast. So perfect10pod.com. And, um, and each week when we launch a new episode, we have video that corresponds with it. So when we have um, Tabitha on there, for example, we have her we'll probably have her serving the food that she made us with her top off or something like, you know, just great video um, of different guests. Um, last week we had this girl, Diane Kawasaki, who is um, a little person, and she did an interview talking about, we were going to do a show together, and we talked, well, it's just a very interesting interview, you have to go check it out. Um, but we have video corresponding to everything that we do, so that's all on the website, and then we have to set up a Twitter and a Facebook account for that as well. So somebody who has to be a part of a show, I mean, just go to the site and hit us up, and we'd love to talk with you. All right, excellent. Well, I want to thank you for um, taking some time to speak with me here at Porn News Today this morning. And I will put this online shortly. And I have a awesome. feeling that you will get so an much. awesome response. And you let me know when you want to come and cook something. Hey, next time I come to L.A., I will cook you guys something, maybe chicken wrapped in bacon. I love oh, that sounds, chicken that wrapped sounds in bacon. Naughty. <laughs> It is, it is, it is. Naughty food is the best food. All right, well, yeah, thank I you. Thank you so much. All right, well, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye.